What's up everyone, back for another beer review and today I will be reviewing yet another beer from the Brooklyn Brewery and they are out of Brooklyn, New York. And this is their Black Chocolate Stout, the 2019 Vintage. So this is a Russian Imperial Stout that comes in at 10% alcohol by volume, 51 IBUs at the time of review. This bottle is approximately two and a half months old. So full disclosure, I've had this one before. No, not this vintage, but I've had this beer numerous times before uh, going back to, man, a couple years after I got into uh, craft beer. So let's say 2011, 12, 13 ish. Uh, I've had, I've had this almost every single year. Uh, maybe not the last couple years, but to me, this is kind of like a classic when it comes to craft um, beer. It's a beer that A is reasonably priced and B, you know, if you see Brooklyn, you can easily get your hands on it. It ages like a champ and Part of the reason I'm reviewing this one today is because I really haven't had it relatively fresh. I think almost every bottle I've had of this beer has been at least six months old, and most of the time, a year or two. I think I had a uh, vintage that was like three years old. Absolutely delicious. So, yeah, uh, it's one of those beers that, uh, you know, a lot of you will probably see and maybe never pick up or kind of forget about. And you know what? I'm kind of guilty of that, too. So I wanted to review it fresh. Um, so it says on the label, we'll read this time, a little bit story time real quick. It says, this is the famous Brooklyn Black Chocolate Stout, descended from the Russian Imperial stouts of this uh, 18th century, our black chocolate stout has itself become a modern classic heralded the world over. A blend of six malts produces its dark chocolate aroma and flavor. There is nothing better in joy with a rich desserts, fine cheeses, and roaring fireplaces. Now, would you say this may be paired with some of your more finer cheeses, like your smoked gouda's, or maybe some blue cheeses, or dare I say, gargazolas? Been a while since I did that, so I apologize. Maybe I should never do that again, or maybe I should do it all the time. Regardless, we're going to review this one. So, again, haven't had this in a couple years. Always a classic, and uh, this has been out of the fridge for almost an hour. Actually, probably a little bit over an hour. I wanted to kind of drink this one room temperature. I think it deserves to do so. Uh, and, uh, you know, at the end of the day, I will say this. This is a delicious beer I've had before. I kind of know what to expect, although not this fresh. But it is not brewed with any chocolate, despite the name. That's that's the best part. It comes all from the malt, and uh, that's fantastic. So, yeah, pouring out. Not super viscous. This is like a deep brown into lighter black color. Um, it's not as, uh, you know, doesn't have a syrupy, almost like motor oil look to it when I was pouring. But, yeah, in the glass, that's straight on pitch black. No ruby red hints. Even though it poured out like a really deep ruby red or deep brown, it, in the glass, it's straight up pitch black. That's crazy. Has about a finger of this really... I'd say brown approaching dark brown, like a mocha into dark brown colored head. Very creamy looking. That looks fantastic. Now, the head is dissipating a bit, but uh, that happens sometimes. Anyway, let's get a nose on it. <sighs> man, such a good, like such a good aroma for something that at the, oh man, I spilled a little bit. <laughs> I can't, hang on, cheating. Spill a little bit there. Um, For something that, again, is called black chocolate stout, and there's no chocolate in here outside of, probably they probably use, you know, chocolate malt and whatnot. Um, there's there's no chocolate in here. It just it smells like there is. Oh man, it's so nice. There is tons of there's like a beautiful mix of dark chocolate and milk chocolate and like baker's chocolate. So you're getting bittering chocolate, you're getting sweeter chocolate, and then you're getting somewhere in between. There's some dark fruits in here. I'm getting like raisins, dark cherry. A little bit of molasses and like caramelized sugar, like not quite car like caramel and toffee, but just like a caramelized sugar to some extent. There's a bittering aspect here. It's almost like a generic, like earthy bitterness to kind of restrain, uh, you know, restrain the sweetness a bit in the nose. <sighs> Even like a touch of vanilla. Again, this is all coming from the malts. There's no adjuncts in here. <sighs> that molasses, which with each sip is just getting more pungent in the nose. Man, this smells awesome. Yeah, smells fantastic. Let's get into it. Cheers, everyone. Look, there are so many crazy beers available nowadays and so much shit going on when it comes to all these. I mean, there are pastry stouts out the wazoo. You know, there's adjuncts galore. You know, a lot of places barrel aging shit, you know, putting vanilla in it and this and that. So when I get a beer like this, or recently I did Narwhal from Sierra Nevada, and I gave that 4.75 out of 5. And actually, I think I got a, a couple people that totally disagreed with that. And that's, that's great. You know, you're, you're welcome to your own opinion. But when I drink beers like this nowadays... Um, and it probably wasn't the case five plus years ago, but nowadays when I drink these beers, I'm just so impressed that, you know, as Matt over Massive Beer, uh, Beer Review says, 
good friend of mine, fellow beer tuber. You guys probably sub to him. If not, definitely check him out and sub. Although, again, you probably sub to him if you sub to me. Um, he always talks about like core four beers, you know, the core four ingredients and beers. And when I drink a beer like this and it's just core four and it's this good, like, yeah, there's, I don't know. Body is like higher side of medium, low full. So maybe that's a touch thin. It is definitely a touch thin for my palate. At the same time, I don't really care because it's not thin enough where I'm going to be like, oh my God, this is like, you know, basically you know, medium bodied or lower side of medium. This still has some heft behind it. 10% heft, probably not. Mouthfeel, there is carbonation, but it's lightly carbonated. It just has a nice soft smoothness to it. And it really enhances the drinkability or the enjoyment factor for me because Sometimes when beers like this are too carbonated, kind of steps in the way of just wanting to sit there and sip on it because it's spritzy on the palate, kind of washing away flavors. It's not doing that at all. There's so much chocolate in here. But again, it's a very complex, you know, just melding of different chocolates. Milk chocolate, dark chocolate, baker's chocolate, like a 50-60% cacao bar. There's even like a little cocoa powder. And that's throughout the palate. Like you're just getting, I'm getting different, each sip I'm getting waves of different chocolates. Sometimes I take a sip and I'll be like, oh, that's more of like a bitter and chocolate. And then the next sip will be like, oh, that's kind of like sweet milk chocolate. It's just so complex just from the chocolate aspect. And again, there's no chocolate in here. There's molasses, there's caramelized sugar. I will say there's actually caramel and like a toffee vibe to this one. Dark fruits, uh, raisin-esque, almost dark cherry type of thing going on. That is like the first half, maybe first two thirds or you know, two thirds of the palate. Though the last third or so, it dries out. There's a, there's a slight touch of alcohol that kind of dries out the palate. There's a slight bittering sensation from the um, hops themselves. This leans to the sweeter side of things, but this is not a, like a super sweet beer or anything. It just has a sweeter, richer you know, type of vibe to it, but it does have enough dryness and bitterness to kind of balance it out. I'd say this is low to moderately bitter and it has a straight up semi-dry finish. So. This is pretty much balanced, but leaning, let's say, 60, 40 to the sweeter side of things. Um, the alcohol, like I said, a little bit of touch alcohol in the back. There's a warming in the chest. I can tell this is around 10%. I'd say like 9 to 10%. So it's appropriate. This is not one that's going to hide it, hide its alcohol extremely well, certainly as fresh as I'm drinking it. After a couple of years, though, I remember the alcohol kind of dying out in this one and drinking more of like an 8% beer. But fresh, yeah, you can definitely tell this is 10%. Ma'am. Yeah, that molasses I'm getting too still on the palate, that really vibrant too. And this is a sweet, but not overly sweet, decadent beer that I think if you like Imperial Stouts and you like Russian Imperial Stouts, let's just say, let's say you like Imperial Stouts in general, pick this one up if you've never had it. Like, I feel like anybody who's never had this one and can easily get it in their neck of the woods, you're doing yourself a disservice not to pick this up. And the reason for that is we'll just do price and availability before I write it, uh, before I rate it. I really do that, but... Price point on this one was $2.59 a bottle. $2.59 a bottle for a 10% Imperial Stout. Like, that's a great value. I think these used to come in four packs, but I think it's six packs now. And I think six packs in my area are like 12 to 14 bucks, depending on where you buy them. There's not many places outside of like Lagunitas where you could buy a quality beer like this for that type of money. I mean, you're, you're talking, if you buy a six pack, like two to two twenty five a bottle, two fifty a bottle. Like, I, that's, that's crazy. And... It's worth every penny. Availability, wherever Brooklyn gets distribution, if you see Brooklyn, you see this beer, you'll see this beer every winter. It is a winter release. They do it every winter. And I would say, and I think I'm going to actually do this, and I, I say, oh, I should go pick up. I think I'm going to pick up two or three bottles of this or maybe an entire six-pack and just age one uh, for each year. Like maybe come back a year from now, drink one, maybe even review it, come back two years and so on, just to see how this has changed. Because this is a beer that's going to, um, the flavors are going to meld together. You're going to have a completely different beer a year or two from now than you are right now. And I've had this one aged and I remember it just, you know, being different, the alcohol not being as prevalent, being more of like a harmonious kind of blend of flavors. This one's a, you get, you know, different, different characteristics at different points of the drink. But yeah, I just, again, price point availability on this one is fantastic. So if you've never had this one, grab it. I'm going to give Black Chocolate Stout from Brooklyn Brewery the 2019 release. It says, I don't know if you'll see it, it says Winter 19 release at the top. This used to be like a 4.25 out of 5 for me. And me, and you know, I, I know, I'm, kind, I, I, I'm aware, I'm self-aware a little bit. 
I think the nostalgia has kicked in with these beers for me around this time. I love, I love Christmas. I love the New Year's. You know, I just love the holidays. Basically, from Halloween, basically from the beginning of October till early January, I'm just dialed in with all the holidays. Nostalgia is kicking in for me, and I have no problems. And again, this is probably going to be kind of like the Sierra Nevada Narwhal review that I did. I have no problems giving this a 4.5 out of 5 all day, every day. I just... A lot of people will look at Brooklyn and be like, yeah, they, you know, they make okay beer. And you know what? The Brooklyn lager is solid and whatnot. And a lot of their, a lot of their seasonals and their special releases just don't do it for me. But I cannot sit here and tell you this is not a great beer because it fucking is. And anybody who's had this one before, I think you would enjoy it. But maybe you don't. Maybe, maybe I'm sure there are people out there like, I just doesn't resonate with me. And I hate saying this in so many reviews, but that is fine to have a differing opinion from me, me having a different opinion from you. Not everyone's going to like this one, but I, I will stick by that. If you've never had this one and you can get it, you owe it to yourself to at least try to see what you potentially might be missing out on. And what you might be missing out on for me is a 4.5 out of 5 beer, which is fucking delicious. And uh, yeah, I just, I'm an idiot. I should be drinking this every single year. I should be buying multiple bottles, if not six packs, and just enjoying it because I'm going to drink the rest of this off camera, enjoy every second. And yeah, I just, I don't know. I guess I'm done here. Um, not much more to say about. So if you've had this one before, let me know what you think about it. I apologize for the rant and stuff. I just, when I drink a beer like this or the Narwhal or there's other beers where I'm just like, these are classics that have kind of fallen by the wayside and a lot of people don't buy them. And I think they should. This is a one that you definitely, definitely should, especially if you've never had before. And now I will shut down the rant, shut down the review. Appreciate everybody stopping by for another beer review till the next one. Cheers.